Hello folks and uh, welcome back to the Mooshix mainframe channel. Uh, today we have uh, something quite uh, special to look at because um, today I'm going to try to install. I've personally never done it before and uh, I haven't practiced for this uh, video but today we're going to try and install a replacement for kicks on our uh, TK4 distribution with MBS 3.8. A lot of people, if you go to the to the mailing list, to the forum, forums, you, you see a lot of questions over time. People saying, hey, uh, I really miss kicks uh, or CICS, as some people call it, on uh, on MVS. Uh, I want to write some COBOL application for kicks. How can I do that? And the answer is, you know, kicks is a licensed product from uh, IBM. Even the very ancient kicks that we used to run on uh, on, um, on MVS 3.8, which I think was 1.4, Kix 1.4, and and as such, it's it's not available for uh, our TK4 distribution or for MVS 3.8. Um, and Kix is kind of an important thing in the mainframe world. Uh, any any time you're talking about online processing um, and transaction processing, you probably see Kix somewhere in the picture there or sometimes IBM, uh, IMS DC, which is the other product. Um, but so Kix is something that a lot of people know. I certainly did a lot of Kix programming uh, back in the early 80s. Uh, at the time we were just switching from Kix 1.5 on MVS SP to Kix 1.6 uh, for MVS XA and then 1.6.1 1 .1, which is the Kix uh, version I have most uh, experience with and then later on 1.7 came out and and then 2.1 and I think right now they're in version 5 something and you have weird new programming languages that support kicks such as uh, Java and but and C and a bunch of other questions back in my days uh, you could only program uh, with kicks only in assembler PL1 or COBOL and that's it and I did a lot of PL1 programming some some assembler and a little tiny little bit of COBOL but so um, luckily there's a person who wrote a Kix replacement for for MBS uh, and even though most of the API is very compatible with Kix uh, with the with the Kix from back then it is somewhat special because it doesn't run in its own address space and uses VTAM to connect terminal to it rather it runs inside the TSO address space so it's a it's a very original implementation or re-implementation of Kix and today we're going to see how to install it uh, the way uh, let's get to this um, screen here uh, this is my VM running on top of my uh, Intel Nook here on top of VMware ESX and I have downloaded the distribution. I'll, below this video, I'll, I'll make I'll give a link to where you can download the full distribution of Kix. This Kix um, is written with K, um, as in kicking somebody Kix. Uh, and by the way, this is convention has been followed also by the Rack F replacement. As you know, we have something called Rack F, which protects data sets and 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 uh, volumes on our TK4. And of course, the original RECF is called is spelled like this with a C. And so, since CICS or Kix is spelled spelled with a C, uh, the person who wrote Kix uh, wrote it like this. Um, and so, below the video, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a link to where you can obtain Kix, and it is legal, by the way, according to the license agreement, to distribute Kix as long as you distribute the whole uh, distribution, which includes the source and the CMS and the TSO version. Uh, of it, um, so I'm following the license which allows me to redistribute it here. Um, and in the license file, you also see the name of the offer. So, uh, what I've done here is I have I uh, started a, a brand new uh, uh, the TK4 update 8, killing the MF1 report printer here, and uh, and then um, I downloaded the Kix distribution, and here it is. Um, there's four files in it. There's the license file, which I suggest you read. Then there is a, a source for Kix, and there is an implementation for TSO, and an implementation for VMware CMS. 
we're going to use version 1.release5 and um, and so there is a a doable um, manual that goes with it on the website to show you how to install it but I think this is one of those cases where a video is actually much better because it's it's much easier to follow video than the documentation that was written by this person um, I think uh, that's just my personal opinion so let's go uh, to our MVS and the way we make this work is that first of all um, I'm gonna and I'm gonna make available also this two files, these two jobs, which are necessary to read in the um, the distribution, the binary, and then receive the uh, transmit uh, package. If you've ever seen my video on how to get data in and out of MVS on top of Hercules, you will see that one of the options is to use a, an XMIT or transmit package, and so we're gonna have to import this transmit package. Uh, uh, to get this all up and running and there's two jobs here one gets the transfer package into MVS through the card reader and another one will then receive uh, the transmit package itself into uh, in its appropriate data set so to get to get this work is once you've downloaded the kicks distribution you go in here and you say dev in it 00c um, and again this is the uh, 00C is the card reader, so um, or we can actually use the 10C card reader. A JC, we're going to call it, uh, and then get to the and then get to the directory where you have kicks, and then we point it to the TSO file. Oops, sorry, actually we have to unzip it first. So before we do that, let me go into kicks here and unzip kicks. I hope you can see the font here. Well, okay, there's actually quite a bit of stuff in here. Uh, okay, uh, what we need is the XMI file. This this one here. Um, this is the transmit file, and we want to we want to receive that into our TSO. So we do that. Uh, and then kicks TSO. Okay. So kick that device in it. 10C. And that's what we say and then device is initialized and then we go to this job which you have to import into your some uh, partition data set and then we start working on this so make sure that you have your user id here as the first card i make mine age so that it goes into the spool um, and then it says you update the high level qualifier in the following card before running it so since we're running this as hurt zero one uh, we will change that and same thing here again I think this is all that we need to change and if this all is done well uh, this should go straight uh, into yeah we put it into pub02 which we have available and um, yeah, so let's try to read this data set in. Um, let's keep an eye here on the MIPS indicator and the IO spread second. And let's start it. Uh, keep an eye here on the MIPS. In. Yeah, it's reading 11,000 IOs per second. 38 MIPS, as you can see here. Uh, it's actually taking quite a while um, okay let's I think it's done let's go check the output yep and this seems to have gone well uh, return code 0 for both steps so uh, this should now um, have gone well uh, let's go find out we said the high level qualifier is the same as my user ID 
and yeah um, so we have it here it imported what we did right now is we imported the transmit file now we have to receive the transmit file if you seen my video on how to get data in and out of uh, MBS 308 on top of Hercules, you will see that um, transmit packages need to be imported. And and so we have this um, other member here called receive, which is called herg one receive uh, again, message class H, so we can look at it online on our output uh, spool. Um, and what we have to do is change it here to herg one same thing here. Um, so this should work. I don't see any reason why not. Okay, so let's try this. Nothing bad can really happen here. Let's keep an eye here again on the MIPS and IOS indicator, but this should be a much faster job. Yeah, so. Um, Yeah, and so it went through well, I think, but let's still go check the, uh, the, the condition code. Yeah, condition code 00. zero. It uh, imported, uh, it received the uh, transmit package. Okay, and so we can go in here. And the last member here is the one that we're interested in. So this is the member that will import um, everything that we need to import. Um, so let's start working on this. So first of all, obviously, we need to call this um, okay, something that we can recognize. Okay. Okay. This should work. Um, specify the volume if you if you care. Um, volume you can specify volume by saying uh, pop 002 yeah okay um, I would say we try this out and um, I think this looks good to me, unless you see something I don't see, but uh, we're getting it to uh, her, the Herc01, which is being used here. Memory the dummy, memory two dummy, track 30, MLQ. I think this should work. Um, let's just give it a try again. Let's see here what happens in this other window. Okay, 51 MIPS, yeah, it's doing a lot of work, so. Um, let's check, out. well, there's a lot of steps here, but um, return code, there's are all zeros. Um, I think so far this looks good. Um, received a lot of, a lot of uh, transmit packages. Let me have a quick look here. Substitution, JSL, this is good. Um, so by the way, folks, uh, as I look through this here, this would be the typical day of a system programmer in an MBS or ZOS job, uh, shop. Um, very, this is very often what people will be working on. Um, uh, by the way, I didn't promise too much. So the author 
of kicks is one Mr. J. James Morrison, but it says it may be distributed under the terms of the Q public license version words. So which means which is which says that I can redistribute the uh, kicks package as long as I redistribute it in its entirety and don't make any partial distributions, which I think is a very generous license. Um, so once we have this done, uh, this looks all good. I'll leave it in the spool so we can go back if something went wrong and check what went wrong. Um, but uh, I think we can just simply now get out of here, uh, go into the TSO prompt, and what we have to type now here is, and you watch carefully, and if you need to stop the video for a second um, so you can see exactly what I'm typing, then please do so. Kicks sys dot v1 r5m0 c list k fix okay uh, kick kick system dot v1 r5 uh, m0 c list k fix um, so let's execute this uh, user ID is herc01 prefix is literal is this kicks install that level qualifier will be here at zero 01. If this is not what you want, press enter to, to, to if this is what you want, then type yes to continue. So we want to continue. Switch to capital only. This is mainframe. <coughs> okay, I think this went well. And so um, let's now. Um, Okay, so um, I think this went well. Let's go again to our RFE editor. And we want to go and into Herb01. And you see here there's a whole lot of data sets now, which uh, were actually imported in the last job we had run um, in, in batch. And we're going to go to herb01.kicks.inslip. Um, where is inslip here and in here we're going to go to, to the first member load mer and um, we will have to submit this job so we're calling it herg01m uh, and make it h load test data for Merak kicks sample applications modified to use display numerics instead of comp3 okay this is COBOL uh, so I used to blow the C program to copy multiple short records so longer records it's also used to set that regular as need for reprofess with it okay so uh, this is a VSAM job ID ID administration um, uh, ICM, AMS, and so then it defines a cluster. So defines a VSAM cluster called Merak. So this is a sample app and just setting up the VSAM here, uh, and then bringing some data into it. Okay, this looks good to me. Uh, remember, it's Herxer one M. Let's save it, and let's keep an eye again here on the MIPS and IOS indicator. Uh, looks like this one ended. Yep, and this is all uh, return code zero so far. Um, so good. Um, let me quickly run through this to see what happened. Yeah, all the ID cams, all the VSAM stuff went well. That's what I just wanted to check here. Okay, so in that case, we can back out from here and we go into load tack and 
we change again the first card. Uh, we want A, and here we want H. Uh, so we're finding the spool. And let me see what's going on here. This is another vSAM job. It's leading some old data. It finds a new uh, vSAM cluster and loads some data, some records into the vSAM cluster. Okay, so this should also uh, work without a problem. So let's just try to submit it. And let's switch to the output queue. Yeah, and this will also went well. Quick scan. Okay, so that was um, load tag, the second one. Okay. Um, so once we're done with that, we'll go to the third one, which is load SDB. So be very careful. We don't go in order that listed here inside the PDS. We start number one with load mer, number two load tag, and then only number three we go to load SDB. Um, so we change here again. Class A, message class H. And again, we have some VSAM. It loads some data into some VSAM files so that the application can then uh, use that. So once you've checked here, that everything is fine, we execute that. And we go check here again for return codes. And by the way, folks, I, I, I think I said at the beginning, this is the first time I'm doing it myself. I've never done it uh, myself before. So there's no guarantee that uh, this is going to work, but we'll find a way to make it work. Um, so this went well. Mm, and now, uh, I think we're done here in this data set. Now we need to go to kicks. Um, we need to go to Kixis uh, Inslib installation library, which is this one. Okay, so before we work in this Inslib, where is it? Um, where was I again? Kix. Yeah, before we worked in this one, which it says here edited, and now we're going to go to Kixis Inslib, which is this one. Okay, and it has to be in this order. Um, that's what I uh, heard from the from the crowd. Um, so we're going to start with load intra, um, and we're going to go again load intra class A for TK4 and class H. You can obviously put it somewhere else. But you don't have to. Uh, let's check in what happens here. This is an ID cams job. We delete a cluster and recreate it again just in case it's there and then create a load in a dummy record to have. Um, and that's because, by the way, COBOL needs to have at least one, one record. If I'm not mistaken, if I remember this well from almost four years ago, you cannot have an empty VSAM. Uh, data set with COBOL, then it always needs to be at least one record. I think that's the reason. But I could be mistaken. I'm sure somebody in the com in the comments are going to correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so why don't we just submit this and see what happens? Um, Li is our job. Yeah, return code zero. Um, number of records process was one. This is the dummy record. Yeah. This all looks good. Um, and now uh, we need to go to load temp. And th it's the next one here in the series. And we change again, herb01, I call it uh, TE, class A, class H. And the same thing again, we delete a, a a vSAM cluster or a small database and recreate it again with a dummy record. Um, let's run this job. I see here one small imperfection. 
Okay, so let's run this again. And yep, uh, return code zero for both steps. Quick rundown. There should be only one record. Uh, yes, that's the dummy record. Okay, so this looks good. Um, now, um, I think we have it installed. And if I'm not mistaken, this is all good. So we live at the RFE um, productivity environment totally. We go into the TSO prompt and we can start our kicks. If everything went well, we should see a, a now a uh, kicks splash screen. And so copy this exactly like this, execute kicks sys dot v1 r5 m0, which is version of five, release five, modification level zero, silis kicks. Um, okay, and we should get a bunch of messages and then just press enter. Um, loading, yeah. Alrighty, um, so we got this working so far uh, the colors are going to be random so you're going to be seeing maybe different colors every time you press enter it changes the colors um, um, so every time you press enter you see the colors change pressing enter here every time which is which is nice um, And you can always call this this screen by calling the KSGM transaction inside Kicks. Um, so now we press clear, which uh, which depends on how you got it configured. Um, let me see where I have clear on my thermal emulator here. Yeah, escape is clear. So I'm gonna press escape. And we can now um, start using kicks. So we do KSSF, um, which is a sign off transaction. Yeah, kicks is shutting down. Okay. Um, okay. So we got this working. Um, now, if we do uh, the same command again, which is um, if according to the to the uh, manual, we can now start again and start doing the transactions. Um, I have to check if I still remember the transactions, uh, kicks, sys, v1, r5, m0, list kicks. Okay, and then we clear, and kedf, yeah. So kedf is, um, is pretty much similar. So the way we do it is, uh, we go here, for instance, and create a queue. Uh, you're, you know, if you know kicks, then you know what's going on in here. Uh, we can create maps. Um, we can send text. Uh, oops. Spool open, spool write, uh, read from transient. What was TS again? Read queue. It's like an, a queue, transient storage. I think, yeah, TS was transient storage. Uh, you would have a queue, DQ format time. Um, so there should be, and we can actually try this, uh, there should be some, there's a Merrick uh, transaction. Let's see. Okay, so there is a 
there is an, an example transaction. Uh, and so let's see how this works. Okay, so in Q1, uh, let's try this in Q1. Okay, source listing not found. Clear shows user screen, cut get customer number. see uh, the word in Q. So there's a couple of transactions, but in Q1 is one customer inquiry, type a customer and press enter. About to execute, execute command, compile. Oh, I think what we need to do Yeah, we have go to breakpoint. So what we have actually, uh, what's going on is that we have debugging enabled. We need to disable debugging. Uh, so how do we get out of here? Okay. I think the best way is to uh, toggle breakpoint. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I wish I knew what I was doing. I, I just don't know. KDF. Um, how do we debug? Is there a debug somewhere where we can disable it? Right, source trace. Yeah, this looks like. Okay, so we need to. Let's try to uh, turn it off and then do in Q1. Yeah, compile that. So this is the debugger. And I really don't know how to. Uh, Okay, so let's mm -hmm. Mm. Okay. So folks, I mean, I don't really know um, how to move forward from here. Um, I know that there is uh, a standard application here, uh, but I would have to... Okay, so we can try something else. We can go to, there's another BT C zero and press uh, the desired function, please automatic refund. Let's try this. I would have to find out what it is that evokes the debugger. So um, I think we got it installed and obviously the debugger is working well. Uh, so I 
complete automatic refund, meaning the Water Department of Labor accounts and contributions. So I don't know uh, how to use this. Um, there is a manual and that will point to it. Um, I was really just trying to uh, make sure that this can be installed and obviously something works. Um, how to um, um, how to program is something else. So, uh, you know, there there is something here which creates the maps. Obviously, every every one of these screens is a map, and so we need to have a way to cre uh, create the maps. And then um, for COBOL, we need to add um, the pre, uh, what is it called, uh, the pre parser to turn all the uh, system, the APIs into calls but there's good examples here how to do it you can obviously also use uh, C there's an example how to use C for writing into it and and so um, looks like this all works actually quite well so shows how far the creativity of the of a community can go um, by the way one thing we're doing right now is um, Oh, KDF on, so kicks execution debug facility. Let's see if we can get out of this thing. Uh, okay. Uh, there is a way to get out of this thing. If I only... So we just have to do KDF off. I think this is how easy it should be uh, if I can get out of this thing. This is a very extensive debugging facility. I, mean, I like it. Uh, KDF off. Okay. Um, what was it? KQ1. Okay, so now we have it without the debugger. Sorry, folks. Um, okay, so we have this application in queue, which uh, tells us how display customer information, customer number 40003, um, change, Howard Susan, we change it to Moshix. It's a customer information system. Uh, this is what Kix uh, was actually this, uh, developed for. Um, and so now, and here's Motions. Perfect. Um, and okay, then, um, so sorry for turning on the debugger, but on the other hand, we saw how powerful this debugger is. I'm really impressed. Um, he did a great job here. Um, uh, where was the Merck? We had the great menu here. Yeah, I think this is it. All right. Um, customer maintenance, and then there was one, oh, or one menu. Yeah, this is the one we had before. Now let's use or one. Type order details, customer number, um, product code. Do another enter with another product code. Let's see what product code we need. Okay, zero zero one. So this is how how it is to work in mainframe. I mean, this would be very typical panel. Penny. Okay. Uh, change. And then we would have uh, 000005, that would be a nickel. We have three of those. Very good. This is a very typical example of a mainframe application. I'm actually quite impressed. Uh, James did a great job here with this thing. Uh, thank you, James. And then um, cancel. 
have some one. Let's see what Moshik's ordered. Okay. Okay, so this seems to work. Um, installing the work examples and then we have the BTC0, BTC0 transaction. By the way, all transaction codes in Kix are four uh, letters, uh, which could be either 0 to 9 or A through F. Um, Implement automatic refund. Let's see how this works. Add the refund request. Calendar year 81. Uh, Moshix. So on and so. City. Uh, say Las Vegas. Nevada zip code. Man. So the security number. I'm going to put in my social security number here, folks. So if you want to. Get a credit card in my name. Uh, this is the code to use. Not uh, gross wages about. Oh, I think fifty thousand dollars a year, not five hundred. I wish. Uh, employee contributions. Two hundred. Um, type required data and enter. Name not completely filled in. So, I mean, we could play with this for a long time. Um, I think you have the, um, you know, where to find the manual. You can see here uh, the examples that were created. And when it comes to programming, uh, we saw before there's an API which goes with COBOL and C. Um, I think I'll just stop here. The video is already over 40 minutes uh, because of this whole debugger mess. Um, but uh, this seems to work, and uh, and um, I just recommend uh, um, that you play with it. And I'll start, I know I will certainly play with it now for a while because I, I like this. And uh, and I haven't done any kicks stuff in, in in many many years, probably almost 40 years. So. Um, but the installation procedure that I outlined worked um, at first trial and uh, once you have it installed go to uh, read the manual and it shows you all the good stuff you can do uh, as I said it supports COBOL and C right now right now uh, it looks like this is an excellent system thank you James Morrison and uh, uh, please subscribe to my uh, Moshix mainframe channel to get notifications of future videos. If you like this particular video, press on the thumbs up button and see you soon for my next video. Thank you very much and have a nice evening.